Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Pedro here. This is a 2007 Toyota Solara. Not every driver wants a convertible that drives like a sports car. And a customer states that the convertible top does not operate and the back windows will not go up or down. Toyota offers the Solara convertible. So, let's see what's going on with it. Oh, what a shame. At only 76,933 miles, there's a major malfunction with the body on this car. A car with all the sensibility of the Toyota Camry. This is not uh, not very good. Okay, backing up into the shop. Let's go and uh, see if we can't make this thing operate or see what's going on with it. Okay, over here to the left, we've got a couple of uh, buttons to operate this. We've got an open and a close for the sunroof. So if we... Convertible top. I, I don't know why I keep calling it a sunroof. Anyway, detach, open, nothing. Detach, close, nothing. I, I do hear some clicking going on back by the windows, but nothing is operating. And I also hear a clicking if I hit the window up and down button. What I mean is I can hear the rear motors actuating with the down button, but I cannot hear the rear motors actuating with the up button. The down clicks work. The up clicks do not work. These windows work. The front windows. This button does not make these go up. Nor does it make them go down. And again, this button does not work. I wonder if this is one button or two separate buttons. Let's look into that. Here, I'm just going to relatch this for right now. I don't need to operate it. I need to figure out what's holding it up. Okay. Yeah, nothing out of the rear windows. I can hear them click if you hit the down, but not the up. Okay. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and printed the, uh, the associated diagrams that are going to help us out with this situation right here. Uh, first thing I want to do is look for our powers and uh, see if we have any open fuses or anything like that. So, taking a look at our diagram, we've got... Okay, we've got a main ECU that is located uh, down behind the dash near my feet, and it has got some integrated fuses in its uh, in its fuse box. We've got ECU B, ECU IG. I don't know what IG stands for. We've got a 30 amp pow 30 amp power output fuse, and that circuit is going to run down and head over to a device called the convertible roof control relay. And that's, uh, I'm assuming that's in the back somewhere, back behind me inside of one of the, uh, the panels. Now this printout is just for the sunroof circuit, but we also have an issue going on with the, uh, the rear windows. It's probably the same, same thing. And I do believe that these two graphs overlap, even though they are called something different one of them is like i said for windows one of them is for the for the convertible top so let's review the second one and see if we have any shared components uh, again we see both of the fuses here here and uh, here we go pw2 that's power windows power windows fuse one so we do have a window circuit uh fuse one i'm assuming is for the front windows fuse two is going to be for the rears so let us track those two rear window circuits I believe each one of them is powered with its individual or individually with a wire. So we're just going to trace these guys back and see where they lead us. Let's see, this one re leads to the power window master switch. Well, I know that one works because our master switch is operating. And our second one that also runs down to or over to the right front window switch. Let's check that one. Okay, that one works. Let's trace out this 30 amp fuse right here as well. Let's follow this one down and see where this goes. Because we know that PW fuse two is good because the systems are functioning. So let's trace this one out. All right, one of those runs back to the power window switch again. That's the master switch. But then the other leg of this circuit, this one runs over to again, the rooftop control relay located behind the the left rear wheel well. Okay. 
I am going to want to go ahead and check that one because I have not verified that that one is functioning yet. So I am going to check that fuse. We're going to check all of them once we go down there into the bolster. We're just kind of going through and making sure that we know of each and every one of these fuses that exists. While we're here, let's try to start at the, uh, the back of the maze, so to speak. This is the right rear window motor and the left rear window motor. Let's go ahead and run these two back and see where they get their control from. And, oh, that was kind of sloppy. Okay, those both go to that convertible control unit. And then this other one here, from the right side again to the control unit. And this one, getting sloppy now, again to the control unit. So both of the window motors that don't operate source its power and ground from this convertible top control unit right over here. There, that was a terrible, terrible arrow. I don't even know what I was doing or what I was thinking. I was non-audibly doodly doodling. So we know that the power for the windows comes from the convertible top control unit. And I would say that the motors for the convertible top, right here and right here, those are also getting their power from the same relay unit, which is again located uh, behind one of the panels behind me. So let us find the switch. I wanna see where the switches run to. Do they run to a fuse, to a relay? Loud noises. That was loud. And power window switch, all windows. Okay, so this is the only switch that can control the rear windows because there is no uh, function on the driver door master switch to run the rear windows. So we have only the switch, which is an operative in the up position. So let's go ahead and trace these guys out. Bear with me, no, 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 we follow along. Okay, back to the control unit. Back to the control unit, okay. Now I know that this switch has power because I can hear the windows trying to go down, but I can't hear them actuating in the up position. Let's see if this switch is any good first. I think it's just, a, according to the diagram, a three wire switch. So let's see if we can't just pop that guy out of there or figure out how to get, get access to it. And we'll just probe it with a meter. There we go. I can't just pop them out real quick. Yeah, look at that. This is gonna work. Nice and easy. Yeah, let's probe these with a meter real quick and, uh, and see if these switches are functioning. That way we can eliminate these two items as a possibility. All right, let's fire up the meter and I'm gonna run this on continuity with the alarm because we're just gonna do a simple test on the switches. So we'll turn on the, uh, the audible alarm here. And what it's gonna do is when it text, detects that two of those pins are connected, for example, the switch is being closed, the meter will alarm and then let me know that those two contacts are in fact connected. So we're just simply testing these switches to make sure that they so work. Here's what we'll do. Put the meter over here. Maybe you guys can see. You're definitely gonna be able to hear it. And since these are just a three wire switch, looks like we've got one common, which is our whites and the white wire here, white wire here, and then the two legs of the circuit, which are gonna be the blue wires and uh, the black wires. So what we'll do, get in there please. And then I'll, I'll probe it and then actuate the switch. All right, that works in the down position. Is that down? No, that's the up position. Let's check the down position. Okay, the window all switch does work. And just for fun, let's check the sunroof convertible top switch. That's the uh, closed position. And here's the open position. All right, these two switches work. Those are not the problem. Let's put those back. Okay, down to the fuse box. All right, we're gonna check some voltages at the fuses and those fuses are located right right inside of here that green lot wire right there that's an extension i'm just gonna clip that to uh the negative on the meter switch that to voltage 
I'll clip that to the negative on the meter so the meter is grounded, then I'll use the positive probe to probe the uh, little pins in the fuses and we'll check those uh, micro fuses to make sure that none of them are open. I don't think I'm gonna find that, but we'll see. Bear with me here for a minute. What I'm doing is going through and probing each one of the access pins on the fuses one at a time and making sure that none of them are open. All right, well, that's not it. It's not a fuse issue. Let's plug that back in. Back to the diagrams. Real quick, I need to issue a redaction. I was calling this the main body ECU, which I knew that it didn't sound right. The ECU, the BCM, main body control module, is located within this other unit, which is the driver's side junction block, and that's the fuse block that we were just probing. Behind all those fuses, it's got a power relay. Here's some of the fuses that we tested, but the uh, body control unit is integrated into that assembly, and uh, that is the redaction that I, I feel compelled to issue because I was wrong with what I called it. Anyway, let's go back to my multicolored squiggly line diagram of the power window convertible top system. And let's, uh, let's employ some critical thinking. Let's decide what we know and what we don't know. We can conclude that the motors are not bad. We can also conclude that the wires from the control unit to the motors are not bad because the motors can be audibly heard attempting to go down. They can't move because they're already down, but you can hear that the system is putting a load on those motors when you apply the switch. And I can hear the alternator come on because there is current flowing. So we know the wires are good. We know the motors are, in theory, good. They're at least good one way but I doubt both motors failed in the bottom position at the same time. So it's gotta be a control issue. The only thing that controls these two motors is this control unit right here. So maintaining focus on the convertible top relay on this diagram, I rechecked for grounds and powers. We have one common ground. You can see it's got some kind of a junction and then the grounds split into three separate circuits. They run up and they're grounding three different circuits at the uh, convertible relay, convertible top relay module. Again, focusing on what we know, we know that we have inputs going into this module because the switch checked out just fine. And where's that other switch? There should be another, there should be the sunroof control switch here somewhere. Do, 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 do. Not right now, phone, I'm busy. I, I don't see that, that other switch. I know it's here. It's got to be here somewhere. Oh, you know what? It's over here on the convertible top graph. Yeah, so we do have the, the switch right here. We know that that switch checks out. So we know that that switch has a good ground. We've already tested for that. And then our two feed wires, again, those are running into right here and right here. Same module, convertible top relay control module, which is represented twice on two different graphs. So we know that this thing is receiving inputs from one control source a second control source, but it is not sending outputs to one, two window motors, and it's not sending outputs to the two motors that operate the uh, convertible top. So at this point, without uh, disassembly, I'm going to have to conclude that we have an issue either with one of these power circuits, ground circuits, or just the module itself has failed. Uh, I will need to remove the back seat and um, probably the, the back seat rest and the actual seat and I believe I have to pull this side panel out over here to gain access to that module. I think it's located right around here somewhere. So next step is I'm going to have to seek authorization and, uh, and diagnostic labor to remove that. And then I can confirm. Uh, I'm about 90% sure that the, uh, the convertible roof control relay module assembly is the uh, unit at fault right here. But I'll need to go in there and then test each one of these individual grounds and powers just to make sure that uh, this thing is receiving everything it's supposed to. If we have all the inputs going into this module, but none of the outputs, then we know that the module is in fact faulty. Uh, we do not have micro switches that uh, communicate the position of the sunroof back to the control unit. I was trying to figure out how that module gets feedback from all the motors with regards to their positions. And it didn't occur to me that this was a 2007 and it just simply relied on the operator knowing when to stop pushing the button after the sunroof convertible top parks itself. Because I don't see any kind of micro switches or sensors or optical sensors or anything like that here that would uh, communicate feedback to the control module 
with regards to the position of the window motors and the uh, and the sunroof motors. Convertible top motors. I'm going to get that right. I'm, I'm going to. It's going to happen. Anyway, let me go let the uh, customer know that uh, we need to get a little bit more invasive on this. And uh, we're going to see what they want to do. Okay, we got a call back from the guy. We had the conversation with him. And uh, it's kind of an expensive repair. So our dude wants to think about it. We are not going to uh, to perform any more diagnostic work or repairs at this time. Uh, they're going to think about it, take a few days, and then uh, then they will decide if uh, if they're going to have me fix the sunroof, convertible top roof, slash uh, the, the, the rear window not going up issue. So uh, I guess that's uh, going to bring this video to a conclusion. Uh, I certainly hope the guy comes back and we get to make this a part two, starting the engine. And if we do not get to make this a part two, then uh, this is gonna be the last time we see this car, I suppose, for a while. So uh, that being said, uh, as always, like, thank you for watching this diagnostic video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please let me know about that by tapping that like button down below and dropping me a comment or two while you're down there. If you did not enjoy this video, just go into my video library and uh, check out something else and maybe you'll like that one. And that will conclude my shameless moment of self-promotion. So again, and as always, thank you for watching, and most importantly, and do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Ending of Toyota. Uh-oh. I better latch these before, uh, before we go. Because then the sunroof might open. That would be bad.